Hey guys, happy Sunday. Welcome all to my stream. It's good to see you all here. <clears throat> uh, so hopefully you were able to uh, catch last Sunday's stream. We had a lot of fun. Uh, my friend Josh was in town. We were filming a bunch of uh, tutorial videos that are going to land on my YouTube channel uh, coming up in the, in the next few months as uh, he's able to have some time to edit and produce those. Um, hey, Mr. Heath, welcome. Welcome to everybody else who's out there lurking. Uh, today, uh, I was thinking what we would do is basically finish up Alley. Hey, small adventure. Nice to see you. And so with Alley, we just, we really are pretty close to being done with her on painting, painting wise. Uh, there's some buckles that need to be done. They're just primed or base coated in black right now. Uh, the last time we were working on her, I got her boots done. We need to do the brown leather gloves and uh, wrist straps. And then there's a few details on her base that I need to paint, the um, gas mask and then the tire. So I'm going to work on those. Then probably, assuming that that, oh, and there's a couple other things. There's some tears in her leggings that we need to go back and, first of all, I need to find where they're at again. And then have a little bit of skin poking through those. And what else? It's been a couple weeks since I've looked at her, so... Um, yeah, once all that's done, I will probably, between this stream and the next stream, I'll get her attached to her base um, and we'll be able to finish her actual basing the next time she's on video and then hopefully that's it. And then so today in one more session, she'll be totally done. Um, yeah, so if you've been following on my Twitter stream or my Twitter or talking about or see, seeing the stream from last time, um, you know that my other project right now I'm working on are these dwarves from Atlantis Miniatures. So if you're interested in following along more with the progress of these guys, keep following me on Twitter. Um, probably once Allie's done, I might take, a, assuming I'm still working on these guys, uh, I might take a couple streams of just letting you guys in on some of the painting for those. We also, I forgot to grab these. Just this last week, um, the busts finally arrived. The Scottish Celtic warrior busts. Um, the detail on these is really, really sharp. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to get started on them. And then all the little accoutrements, the weapons and the extra braids and things that need to be attached. So um, for the future, if any of you guys are interested in painting, you know, maybe you've never painted a bust before, you want to learn how to paint a bust, um, or just you want to paint along with me, I will be painting these miniatures on stream in the next couple months so probably I'll wait a few weeks before I start doing that but if you want to paint along with me uh, you can actually order these from me if you go to my website gorillawithabrush.com um, you can order them and paint along with me and I'll talk about how to paint every little stage of these guys and that'll be a lot of fun so if you're interested in that um, go ahead and you can order from the, them from there uh, if you message me through one of my social media accounts or send me an email, alan at gorillawithabrush.com. Um, I might even give you a, a little discount. So uh, go ahead and contact me through one of those those means and hopefully be fun. If you guys can paint along with me, do some Celtic warrior busts. Those will be cool. All right. Hey, what's up, Zach? Pack team. Nice to see you here. But that's for later. Let's work on Allie. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint her gloves. Now they're more or less already base coated brown. There's some black bleed over from the guns. Maybe I'll just touch that up a little bit just so we don't have some weird differences in color there. I think I base coated those more or less in Dubai brown from scale 75. 
It'll be close enough if I didn't. We'll just use that. So Blues Light Painting, who's in the, the uh, who's in the chat room right now, just finished up a five-headed dragon model he's been working on for four months. How long have you been working on that dragon, Zach? So you guys should all give a shout out to him of congratulations for finishing finishing a monster, monster uh, commission. He got to mail that out this week. Pack team says, I keep finding more to do. He can't even see anything else that needs to be done on the model. That's the problem, man. There's always, you can always go back and do more. I don't know who said it first, but there's a comment that says, art is never finished, it's just abandoned. You just keep working on something till it gets to the point where you're just ready to move on. And hopefully, we'll get that, uh, get her to a decent point today and just have the base left. So is anybody painting along with me today? <laughs> it's always nice to know people are out there with wet paint brushes getting work done on a Sunday afternoon. Nice, Mr. Heath. I, that'll be fun. I, I really enjoy painting with other people, getting little painting parties together and, and sit down and just have a good time. I don't get enough of that these days. That's one of the reasons I created this Twitch stream was to get some people to hang out with me while I paint. It can be kind of lonely just sitting here by myself. All right, let's build up a little texture on those gloves. And, I don't know, let's just, let's go crazy. Um, I'm going to start off by adding some orange leather to this. By the way, um, I meant, I was hoping by the time the stream started today that I could uh, announce the URL and have it tweeted out for where this is located, but I, it's supposed to get uploaded by the end of today. Uh, yesterday, I was interviewed by uh, a guy named Aaron who hosts the Crit Fail YouTube channel. And so we had a cool, like about two hour conversation or so yesterday through Skype and he was gonna be editing the video, producing it, putting a bunch of pictures of my painted models over the top of our conversation and um, 
just having a cool hobby talk. So as soon as I see the final video go up, I will tweet out the link to that. But you guys can go try to find him on YouTube. Uh, again, the, the channel is called Crit Fail. I think there's a second YouTube channel that tries to use that name as well. Um, they only have like five subscribers, so look for the one with more subscribers than that. But he does a lot of um, like product reviews and he does different things. He'll do historical models, he'll do uh, kits, like cars or airplanes, things like that. Lots of D&D inspired things. So that's a fun channel to go check out. I'm getting that feeling again like I've forgotten how to paint a little bit. I haven't gotten much painting time in this week after after Josh being in town and we took just about four solid days of mostly just painting in the during the day. I had to take some time off this week to catch up on a few things. And also was just kind of not feeling super well this week, so I didn't get a lot of painting done. And now I just feel clumsy. It's so weird. Probably doesn't help. I had about twice as much caffeine today as I normally do. I had breakfast with my wife and then went out to an kind of an early lunch at a breakfast place with my buddy. No rock climbing today. My shoulders kind of tweaked from Friday night. There's a couple crazy, crazy new climbs that my partner and I have been working on that are just murder on my shoulder and I overdid it a little bit on Friday night. It's tough to remind myself sometimes that I'm not as young as I used to be. I don't have the invincibility of my youth any longer. I am almost 40. Getting pretty close to the big 4-0. I don't look it because I never had kids. I think that's my secret. I've been able to actually get a decent night's sleep for most of my life. <laughs>
All right, I'm adding a little bit of SS Camo Highlight. It's basically a flesh tone color from Warfront. It's just whatever I grabbed off the rack. I'm not being too particular now because I know I'm going to glaze over this with brown colors. So I just need something that's going to lighten that brown a little bit. That's cool, man. I uh, pack team saying that uh, he's got a good friend of his who's got a teenage son who he's going to start painting with. I've been I've been trying to plant the seeds in my niece and nephew over the past couple of years. I show them a lot of my painted models and 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 talk about the painted models, and they get sort of excited. They want to see more. They want to they frequently ask me what I'm working on, so I'll pull out my phone and show them. I'm trying to, to create a few inbuilt painting buddies in my my family. We'll see if it pans out, but good luck with that. Now, if you kind of watch what I'm doing, while I'm, whenever I do leather, as I'm building up the layers, I'm, I'm consciously not being completely smooth with my paint application because I want to have texture built into the, the, the layers. So then when I go back and do some overglazing, there's still texture showing in there. Like you can see that, hopefully you can see that on some of the darker leather areas. You want to have some of that texture. Creates visual interest, a little bit more realism. that question to me, pack team? Do I do much non-metallic metal? Because if so, that's all I do. I, I don't even own metallic paints.
not to say there's anything wrong with painting with true metallics and it's something I want to go back and, and work more with but it's just always been just part of my style and, and the look that I really like is having the consistent the consistent finish that comes from using blacks and yellows and things like that to do metallics. I've always preferred that my my models look more like paintings or animations rather than trying to make them look hyper realistic. I think it's a little bit funny that sometimes the things that you don't do are the things that impress you the most or that attract you the most. I, I love looking at people's work who do tons of weathering, who do true metallic metals in a really, really realistic style. It's just not something I, I do myself very much at, this, at the moment. I anticipated your question, haha. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go in with let's do some of the extreme highlighting. Do I use a particular brush cleaner? So this, I just use water while I'm painting. Um, when I do clean my brushes, I use the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. So it's a pretty popular brand among painters. Uh, I did, in one of the videos Josh and I shot, I talked about brush care. And so I actually showed, gave an example of how to use this to clean your brushes. There's also a pink brush soap that you can get at a lot of craft stores. It just comes in a little bottle and it's pink. Um, that stuff works really well too. That's a liquid. This one's a, a bar soap that you work up to a lather and work into your brushes. But the pink soap stuff works good too. I've used that in the past. As I'm thinking about it, I should probably mention, I don't, I don't think I clean my brushes quite as often as I've heard some other painters do. Uh, 
they still last okay. I think part of it is I, I rinse them really frequently while I'm painting. So I try to keep them as clean as I can while I'm using them. And I only wash them every so often. Either, usually not even when it seems like they need them, just when I think to do it. Sometimes when I'm not going to be painting for a couple days, I'll just go ahead and br clean out the brushes or something. But. There's some artists who will clean, wash their brushes every couple days, or if they do a painting session that lasts more than a couple hours, they just wash them automatically. It seems a little excessive to me in my experience, but... Hey, Dread Raw, thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. Uh, sorry you have to go, but hopefully you can see you on another, um, another stream later. And um, you're welcome for the encouraging words on Twitter. I'm, I'm not sure what your Twitter handle is, but I'm glad that, um, I'm glad we connected on Twitter and talk to you later. So let's go back in with some Dubai Brown. I'm gonna mix up a glaze for this guy. Oh, this is awesome. Hey man, dude. Your stuff is amazing. I, those two busts that you just put out, holy cow. The, the color, the, the fades on them, just seriously fantastic work. Um, yeah, blew me away. So I'm, I'm glad that, you're, that I was encouraging to you, but I hope you understand that you're doing fantastic stuff. So um, it's, it's sincere. I, I really enjoyed seeing those. Gloves, maybe a light green, then glaze brown. Are you saying to paint them green and then glaze brown over them? I mean, I could certainly glaze some green into them. I usually prefer to glaze my, my colors in later after I go back with the base color. Um, you could paint them green and, and do the brown, which would sort of do a brown wash on the green, but that can sometimes look a little muddy. That's like using the Devlin mud or whatever it's called on GW uses to just kind of go over everything. Shades everything, but it all sort of turns it a uniform brown. So I like to reestablish my colors and then add some of the, the tones into the highlights, or I'm sorry, into the shadows. All right, so as we glaze, that, that might take a little to dry since we have a small spot. Um, I am going to try to find the places on her leggings where we need to go back in and add some flesh. Yeah, putting in uh, hints of green would certainly help to tie them together. Um, the other thing, if you recall, in the previous steps for her in all the browns that I did, and even some of the black, 
I was glazing in dark purple down into the shadows. So doing that will also help tie in, tie things together. I said there's purple in the shadows of her green. There's purple in the tones of the shadows on her t-shirt. Uh, her skin has a little bit of a cool red, slightly purplish tone to it. So doing the purples is, is also gonna subtly tie things together. That's probably what I'll end up doing. But glazing in some green is certainly another option. I don't think you could go wrong with either one of those approaches. Hey, Mr. Heath, thanks for stopping by. Take care. funny as I was painting these leggings I was reminding myself you gotta go back and and work on the the tears make sure to go back and put some flesh color in there and it's now that I've got the camo in there the, the little tears have completely just disappeared into the the leggings and I'm starting to think that if I never went back and did anything with them no one would even know I certainly can't see them anymore, except the one I just filled, I just touched up, but I can easily go back and add dark brown to that. Yeah, I'm just gonna fill that in. We don't need to highlight and attract attention to something that clearly doesn't even really show up any longer. So I never studied art formally. As I, when I, as I was growing up, I did a lot of, I did a lot of drawing, but it was mostly self-taught. Uh, my preferred, kind of one of my preferred methods was I would um, I would take a book, like I had books of Battletech drawings. I loved collecting those, looking at all the pictures of the robots in them. I would take the pictures of the Battletech robots, I would use a ruler to draw a grid over top of them. And then I would take a much larger piece of poster board or some larger piece of paper. And I would try to reproduce the drawing at a larger scale using the grid as a guide. And then I would do lots of you know, freehand trying to copy other people's work at different scales and, and teaching myself to draw cartoons and things like that in that way. But, um, but that's about the extent of it. I just, I just started painting and just, you know, really enjoyed it and just kept trying to learn more. Push myself, try to copy what other people were doing so I could learn their technique and then adapt it, make it my own. So in terms of color theory or anything like that that I've gained over time, it's mostly just through trial and error or you know, reading some books or something like that. <laughs> I made that tear a little more obvious than it was prior. I probably would have been best to just leave it alone. That's all right. I'm not gonna mess with them anymore.
I was commenting the other day that on my technique for paint for transferring designs onto banners, I don't know why it took me so long to remember that that's how I used to draw and transfer things. Because for a long time, I would just basically just try to freehand the entire thing. It wasn't until I saw Stefan Rath do a banner and he did the grid method. And I'm like, oh, of course. Why, why am I not using that technique on my miniatures? So now that's what I do when I paint a large banner. Or even something like her tattoo. I don't know if you recall the video for doing Ali's tattoo. I didn't draw a grid on her arm, but I did use little dots. And I placed the dots at key locations in where the, the image was going to go. And used those dots to guide my paint strokes. Yep, the grid method is super useful for, for doing that stuff. I was talking in the, the interview yesterday about how you know, we were talking about new painters and what you know advice for new painters and things like that. One of the things we started talking about was how a good a good thing to talk to new painters about is trying to demystify some of the process a little bit. Because it's easy to look at somebody's finished work, somebody who's been painting for a really, really long time, and just assume that somehow magically they just, you know, just whip their brush across a model and it turns out to be this amazing masterpiece. And, you know, if you go back through history, people who were canvas painters, you know, some of the greatest masters of, of history, had people sitting for them. They were using human models to try to create the outlines and the shapes and things that they wanted before filling them in and, and making them more rich with the paint. Lots of artists nowadays and drawers, they will, um, like they'll take lots of photographs of maybe their hands in different positions, use that as reference. There's even painters who will use projection equipment to project images onto canvases, sketch everything in that way, and then start applying uh, paint. There's really nothing, there's, there's no such thing as cheating when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, well, I sh that's maybe a little strong. If you take a photograph and use a printer to print the image on canvas and then claim you painted it, that's not quite the same. But, you know, within reason, there's, there's no such thing as really cheating when you're talking about using reference stuff. I look up pictures all the time and use them for reference for colors. I look up designs to create banners from. And hopefully one of my goals with doing this model 100% on my stream is to really show people that you know, time and dedication and care is, is kind of some of the most important things, not just raw skill or um, something like that. It's really about just putting all the little pieces together to, to piece the model together. Yep, see, pack teams using all of these same, same techniques to, to create really cool uh, maps and theater art theater uh, sets design and things like that.
while that dries, do some, uh, I'm gonna add a little black to that and start doing some more, more shading here in a minute. But while that's drying, I was gonna say I was gonna start uh, touching up a couple places. Ah, yes. She's got some spots on her skin where I have gotten careless. And I got a little paint on there. So I'm going to try to mix up a very muted flesh tone that's somewhat close to her tone. I just don't want it to stand out when it's on the model. I'm not gonna do all of the different layers like I did on her skin, but I just want something that will cover up what's there without standing out. Needs a little pink to it. So Pack Team saying he struggles with working on models. He runs out of steam sometimes, and that's okay too. I mean, there's models that I've started to work on and I've put away to come back to later, um, where I sometimes struggle as well with inspiration to finish a model off. It's okay. Sometimes it's just important to let your brain just reflect on it a little bit. Take some time to look at some some concept art, some inspirational pieces that maybe will give you ideas, get your mojo back. Made that a little too thin. I don't know of a surefire cure for for that, you know, when you're you're struggling with motivation or inspiration for a piece, other than just to not force it. Because um, if you're forcing it, you're you're not going to take the same amount of time or care or patience with it. You're just going to start to try to push through. It's going to be sloppier. You're probably not going to be as happy with it. So. If you feel that lack of motivation, lack of inspiration, just know it's okay to put that piece away. Maybe find somebody to talk through what you're thinking, give you some ideas. Like I said, just go, just go browse other people's work. See if there, you see something that inspires you. Grab some paints, just start mixing. See if you can find some cool colors that might break you out of your funk. I would just say remember that this is supposed to be a hobby, which means it's supposed to be enjoyable. If whatever you're working on isn't making you happy, if you're not enjoying it, then don't do it. Go work on something else for a while.
<laughs> so, uh, Pack Team said that the Redemptor Dreadnought, which he's working on, has a lot of flat space, which is intimidating to him right now. And uh, he doesn't know if he wants to dry brush some texture on it or do something more ornate and new. I say go for ornate, man. Try the try the freehand stuff. Do it, man. If you're not gonna if you're not gonna try it now, what model is it? Are you gonna try it on? And one thing that's kind of cool is if you have it primed, you can take pretty thinned paint, so something that you're, it's going to be easy to paint over and sketch on those surfaces. You know, draw the grid. If you haven't, didn't watch my video from last week, my stream from last week, go back and watch the, the video on demand for it. But make a grid on your design, sketch out the design, and don't even worry about whether you get it perfect. If you, oh, it's a little wide here, go back and correct a little bit. Get the sketch on there before you even worry about trying to make anything perfect. Um, it's something that Again, you know, painters or, or artists, cartoonists, things like that, they do lots of sketching before they go back in and ink everything. Um, use the same mindset when you're working on large flat areas on a model. Uh, sketch out what you want to do before you ever worry about trying to, to make the actual details. And then make sure that you give yourself like maybe a darker background than what your detail is going to be or vice versa. And just know that if you make a mistake, you can go back and touch up with the other color and just go back and forth. If you remember when I was doing the lettering on the back of her shirt, I went back and forth between the, the off-white color and the green color two or three times before the letters got to be what I wanted them to be. So your first pass doesn't have to be perfect. You're just going to slowly build up the clarity in those details. You can use a pencil. Um, what I don't like about pencils on the models is that they're going to leave little flecks of graphite behind. And that's going to get into your paint. It's going to add some, some texture into there. Um, so that's not ideal, although you can do it. Um, I would just use a, you just use a paintbrush. Again, use very thin down paint so that it's going to be easy to paint over and it's not creating like a thick line that even when you paint over it, it's going to be visible. Just use really thin down paint and just sketch out, you know, just kind of sketch out where your shapes are going to be. And then you can go back in and, and fix them later. Again, basic, basically what I showed last week with painting the grid lines, it's the same concept except you can actually sketch out the shapes with the light color too. So he's asking if it would be runny if you're using thinned down paints to sketch. It's all about how much paint's on your brush. Um, you know, load your brush, tap it on a paper towel so you don't have too much. Use a small brush head so again, you don't have too much paint in your brush. 
and your your goal is just essentially So, you know, maybe you want to do a lion head and you've got a lion head uh, reference art. So if you look at the shapes in the lion head, maybe he's got kind of a, like an oval up at the top of his head. You just kind of sketch out. Okay, there's the shape for the top of his head. He's going to have sort of an oval. The long part of his face, you can sketch that part in. Sketch out where his ears are going to be. So it's thin paint, but I don't have very much on my brush. Sketch out where the where the mane is going to come out to. If you go out too far, you say, I don't really want it out that far. It's okay, because at this point you're just sketching in. You're going to paint over it later anyway. So you get the you get the areas established. Then you can go back in with paint that's thicker. Once you get all your shapes secure, you can go back in and just basically you're just outlining them at that point with the, the thinner paint. Anyway, hopefully that, that gets the idea. Yeah, that's why I chose that. That's why I chose a lion head for you. I was, um, I picked my example purposely. Well, scroll work definitely is a little bit more uh, difficult just because you tend to want really, really fine lines. But again, the secret, one of the secrets is that you go back and forth between them. So once you have your initial sort of sketches of where those scrolls are gonna go, and then you paint in the actual scroll with the slightly thicker paint, anywhere where you get it a little too thick or you get it like the line is a little too thick or um, you realize you kind of messed up, like the arc isn't quite what you want, just fix it, what you want, and then go back in with the base color that's behind it, whatever your background color is, and work on that side. And you can just go back and forth between the two colors, cleaning up your work as you go. That's how I do it. Very rarely does everything go on perfect the first time. You can also, they make paint pens, which are really thin, essentially pens, but they're putting out paint. You can get those at craft stores and things. Um, and you can just draw the scroll work on if you prefer to draw rather than use a paintbrush. That can work as well. I've seen people do that. I will admit that I've never done that myself, so I can't, I can't speak to how, how well they work. They seem to work well for other people. I just can't give you any tips on things to watch out for or anything like that. So I just added a little bit of black to that brown and I'm starting to glaze in some shadows with the gloves.
I'm going to do a couple coats with this. I'll probably add just a little bit more black and do some final shadowing. What kind of piece was it, Pack Team? Was it a uh, was it like a model you were painting, or was it like canvas art or a drawing or something? If it was a model, hold on to that. Leave it in your display case. Display it proudly, prominently. Think about where you started and where you come. Um, I do that all the time. I've shared on my stream here several times about those first models I ever painted. And I proudly show those because I want people to understand that all of us have a journey in this hobby. We all started someplace. I certainly don't think of my journey as ended. I don't think of the stuff I'm working on now as the best pieces I will ever paint. And I like to look back at what I did before and remember when I look when I get discouraged or when I start to lose motivation and think, you know, I'm I'm not as good as other people and I can look and see how far I can I've come and think about where I want to go next. Is a 40k space marine. I like that idea. Uh, Pack Team's saying that he's he really is happy with how a Cthulhu bust that he painted recently came out. He's thinking about getting one and, and painting it every New Year's and so you can see from one year to the next how he's progressed. I think that's really cool. Um, it's a pretty large model to pick for your, your annual improvement model. You just you need a bigger display case to keep all of them. like the scene from Jaws. We're going to need a bigger boat. Pack team's going to need a bigger display case.
getting pretty happy with where that's coming. I'm going to do one more coat. That's neat. He, he has carpentry skills. Maybe you would think you've mentioned on here before you do a lot of set design for for plays and, and theater, which is really awesome. So yeah, I imagine you're you probably have carpentry skills second to none. That's awesome. So he can build his own larger display case. I'm liking those gloves. One of the things I purposely thought about with her was trying to get some slight variation on the leathers that she's wearing. So even though she's wearing, she's got boots, she's got belts, holsters, gloves it would have been faster and guaranteed to make her you know make everything match if I had just done it all the same but I purposely varied it a little bit because I want to convey that there's there are different materials you know her boots her leather belt, her gloves, you know, they're not all necessarily made of the exact same material. And so they reflect that by some slight variation in color. Um, and her boots then being black instead of one of the brownish, but. All right. She's got some, some buckles on her gloves. I'm gonna base coat those in black. So I assume most of you guys are, they, that you follow me on Twitter, at Gorilla Brush. If you do, you might have noticed a tweet I sent out earlier today, which is that I'm basically at a thousand followers, which is pretty cool. Um, so again, I rebranded about a, about a year ago. And at that time, I had had a Twitter account of my own, just under my own name for a few years where I tweeted all my my painting stuff. I had some followers on there for sure. But I had had that for three or four years and was up to maybe 500 followers or so. When I created my new rebranded account, in the course of one year, we basically have double that number of followers. So I appreciate all you guys coming with me on this journey that I'm on, trying to improve my painting, try to get better. Share the hobby love with everybody. Create a fun community. I appreciate that you're with me on this ride.
You didn't see that. Mostly no harm done. It's just paint. It's just paint. As long as you catch it while it's wet, it's not. You can usually even save black paint streaked across your carefully highlighted and shaded surfaces. Trick is a wet wet paintbrush and gentle, be very gentle because you don't want to rub off the paint that's below. You just want to get the stuff that's the wettest. How do I prevent edges from weathering and showing the model beneath? So essentially, how do you prevent paint from being rubbed off? So there's, a, there's, three, there's three important things when it comes to having your paint be preserved on the model. Actually, there might be more than three. This, this is probably going to be, be more than three things as I, as I list them off. Um, so one thing is that... Um, you want to make sure that you've washed the model thoroughly before you start painting it. So all models, before they go into the molds, the molds are sprayed with a mold release agent. It's kind of like, um, like spraying your pan with oil before you start cooking. It's just so that the, the model itself doesn't stick to the mold. This is especially true with resin and metal models. Uh, it's true with the hard plastic stuff too, but I don't think they need quite as much in those. So certainly with resin and, and metal and the soft plastic models that Privateer Press and stuff will sometimes make. So <laughs> um, and the mold release agent, it's a non-stick compound. So naturally your paint doesn't want to stick to it either. And so because that's usually on your model as a residue, you really, really need to wash your model good in some warm, soapy water. Um, even better is take an old toothbrush and scrub them down um, gently, but scrub, scrub with the warm, soapy water, rinse it really good, let it dry fully before you try to put any paint on it. So let it sit for 24 hours or so, let it dry. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need a really good quality primer. Uh, if you're doing metal models, um, the best primers for durability are automotive primers because they're self-etching. They will actually bond to metal. If you just get normal spray paint, normal spray paint is usually made for more plastic surfaces or wood surfaces and things that are uh, that it'll bond to better. So make sure that you get a primer that is meant for the surfaces that you're doing. If you're doing something with plastic or resin, usually any of the model primers are going to be pretty good. Um, the Badger primers or GW primers, whatever. They're pretty, they're pretty decent for plastic or resin, but for metal stuff, you need stuff that's an actual metal primer, really. Um, the negative side of that is they're usually thicker, so they can sometimes hide detail if you're not careful. So it's a little bit of a trade-off there. Uh, the next thing is it's going to matter about the durability of the paint that you're putting on. 
So for example, if you know Vallejo has, for example, model color and game color, one of the big differences other than just how sort of bright and fantasy-ish the colors are, uh, the game color has more acrylic hardener in it. I'm pretty sure that's what it, what gives it the hardness. And so it's more durable than the model paint. So the model color is meant for more display type stuff. The game stuff is meant for more gaming models. Now, gamers and painters use both of them interchangeably, just whatever color they want. But that's, I think, the original design of them. So the game color has more durability. Uh, things like GW have a little bit more acrylic hardener than things like the scale color have. The scale colors are going to rub off um, a little bit easier. So that's another thing. Um, after that, while you're painting the model, you try not to touch the model with your hands. Um, you could put, use gloves if you want, but gloves are still going to rub off. But if you touch the model with your hands, which is one of the reasons I really like the, the Rathcore holders, if you touch the model with your hands, you're doing two things. You're actively rubbing the surface, so you're rubbing things off. Um, second, you're depositing your oils from your finger onto the, the model. And just like the paint doesn't want to stick to that, the mold release agent, the paint's not going to want to stick to oil in your fingers either. So if you've got oil from your fingers on the model and you paint over it, you're not getting a strong bond, and so that paint's going to rub off more easily. And finally, you want to varnish any models that you're worried about um, having things chip or rub off of. Um, there's kind of an old adage that the gloss varnish is more protective than matte coat, and then other people disagree. I'm not a chemist. I don't understand everything. I do know that there's a difference between products like Tester's Dull Coat, which is a finisher. It's not a true varnish, versus things like Minwax Polycrylic, which are an actual varnish protective coat. So make sure that you're using something that's designed to be a protective coat. You can give it one to two light coats of that. And then if you want to use a finisher or something like dull coat to really get the, the finish that you want at the end, that's, that's fine. But like those are all of the ways that you can minimize the chipping and the rubbing off. Um, you can never fully protect against that. But the better you do all of those parts of the process, the... Um, you're just every time every time you do one of those things right you're making your paint coat stronger and more durable so to maximize this durability try to do all of those things so hopefully that helps all right so let's paint her little buckles and stuff I don't want these things to be super shiny so I'm not going to go really light with the gray, especially the buckles on the straps that go across her legs. I don't want those too shiny. And by the way, for a model like Allie, who I don't think anybody's really planning to play with, I mean, if somebody wants to, by the way, I, she is for sale. If anybody wants her, you can contact me. Um, I pretty much sell anything that I paint. So if it's not a commission job I'm working on and you're interested in buying it, uh, you can always contact me. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. But if somebody wanted Allie, they're probably not playing with her. They're just using her for a display model. If I end up not selling her and just keeping her, she'll just go in a display case as a display model. So I'm not actually going to varnish, varnish her. Well, my original plan was not to varnish her. I would just use dull coat to get the finish that I want. However, the... A guy I was talking to yesterday about using weathering patterns, he actually recommended putting a gloss varnish on before you try to do weathering pattern powders, because then when you put the uh, the powder fi the pigment fixer on there, it, it creates a better finish, and then put matte varnish over it. I really didn't mean to go all the way there, but for display models, I usually just use dull coat because people aren't handling the model, so I'm not really worried about paint durability. But if anyone's going to be handling them, you definitely want the best primer you can get and the best varnish that you can get. Those are the two most, well, those and washing the model are the, the three most important. The type of paint you use is certainly important, but if you have a really, really good foundation, a really good varnish it can make up for using paint that's not necessarily quite as durable
Hip Hack team, it was good to see you. Take care of yourself, man. Tell the wife I said hello. I was going to get back to uh, selling the models that I paint. So these days, you know, I don't really, I don't have a local community too much anymore. I used to have my models on display a lot at local game stores, but now they just sit in a cabinet at my house. So I've just kind of changed my attitude about a lot of things relative to the hobby, and I, I really enjoy painting the models. I get pictures of them and keep them, but I'm, I'm really, I don't worry too much about being super sentimental and um, holding on to things. So, like I said, I ended up I end up selling a lot of the models I paint now, and I use most of the money to just continue to fund my hobby, continue to let me do things like stream and buy new models and buy paints, things like that. Um, but I also donate 25% of any of the money that I get from commissions or selling models that I paint to charitable organizations. I try to do some good with the, the hobby work that I do. So last year I gave, um, in addition to donating models to the Nova Open Charitable Foundation for their charity raffle, I also donated money to them, 25% of my commission stuff from last year, to do to sponsor their their work. And they do a lot of donations to Doctors Without Borders and things like that. This year uh, my plan is to donate to the Arizona Pet Project. There's going to be one one big company. What they do is they go to they're in contact with a lot of vet, vet, uh, vets and animal hospitals and stuff in the region and when When families who can't really afford veterinary care for their their uh, family pets, the Arizona Pet Project can step in and help them out with some of the medical bills, so that you know poor kids who don't have a lot necessarily going on and going for them in their life, and life is kind of tough, and you know they can keep some keep their best friend in their life essentially. And so I think it's a really good cause, and they get really they get good ratings for their charity in terms of the amount of that they're that the money you donate to them actually does there's not a lot of overhead costs and things so that's one thing and then also the gorilla international fund just to kind of help out my namesakes they do a lot of work with local communities where gorillas actually live and try to educate that population and help them so that the gorillas and the locals can live in harmony together and stuff like that so those those are two organizations i plan to donate to this year so I try not to, I'm, my plan is to not really ever make, never hide or ever hide my stuff behind a paywall. There's a lot of painters who have Patreon accounts and they, people who donate to them can get access to streams like this or they can get access to special tutorial videos. Um, I just did a tu bunch of tutorial videos. I'm gonna make all those freely available to you guys. I'm not gonna be charging for them. So, you know, if you're, if you're ever wanting to support me in what I do other than just being awesome on Twitter and liking and sharing the things that I do if you're ever wanting to support me monetarily there's a couple things you could do um, you can always subscribe to my twitch channel which ends up some of that trickles down to me which is cool 
Um, you can purchase things on Amazon using the links that are on my Twitch page. So that funnels some money back to me. Um, you can purchase one of the models that I paint and certainly that, that helps. And then you can have a display model, something that I've worked on. Um, at the moment, if you purchase those busts, those Celtic busts, um, that, that's a way to support me as well. You don't have to do any of those things. Just you being here, just watching my videos, hanging out with me, encouraging me on Twitter to keep me going. Um, that's the most important thing to me, but I just wanted to throw that out there that if you're interested in, in helping me out, those are a few ways you can do it. And again, 25% of this, the money that I make from this hobby, I, I donate. So anyway, that's my commercial. I do one of those every so often on stream, but not, not too much because that's not what this is about. This is about us hanging out and painting. Diego is uh, getting restless for attention. He keeps running past my legs and brushing me with his tail. I think he's he's wanting to know if Cass was on stream. She's become a big fan of his.
don't know if you guys on the stream can hear all the birds in the background. It's a really beautiful day here. Really, we've got all the doors and windows in our house open. The birds are just going crazy. Try something here. This might end up being a mistake. I wanted to scuff up the toe of her boot a little bit. I'm just gonna do a light, light dry brush. Got really light. Getting really close. Mm, I don't want that gray. Again, in case you're wondering what I'm doing there, I just find these things are so much easier to clean up when they don't have a ton of dried paint in them. So I just soak up the extra paint when I'm done with it, just to make it easier later. So what I want for the tires is I actually want a warmer gray. I want gray with a little bit of brown in it. This little guy is so desperate to, to get on camera. I'm going to start with um, petroleum gray just to create a base that's not quite black for the rubber. I'm gonna close the front door because somebody's doing yard work out there.
Sorry about that. And now the cat is crying. Again, my current goal is to try out weathering pigments on this base. So this tire is going to have a lot of dirt and dust on it. So I'm not going to worry too much about making it perfect, but I just want to create some depth and, and color. What I might do is basically just paint this gas mask. Very similar for the leather part on it, or rubber, I guess. I don't really know. Never worn a gas mask. I don't know what they're usually made out of. Probably rubber. I would guess leather might be more porous than you would want for a gas mask. The color step from the darker color to this lighter color I mixed up was a little, a little more than I thought as I started putting it on. So I just, I watered it down a little bit so that it'll create a little, little more subtle transition as I paint it on. The thinner paints show more of the the base coat so you get a more subtle transition.
There you go, section. <laughs> That's awesome. <clears throat> go section by any chance, are you uh, Aaron? <laughs> Yeah, so Ghost Section and I were having a conversation. He's the one who runs the, the channel um, Crit Fail I was telling you guys about earlier in the broadcast that you should definitely go check out their, their YouTube page and there's going to be a video of him and I chatting hobby yesterday, from yesterday. But I was mentioning that my, my most frequently asked question that I get is where did I get these holders? And it's usually, you know, it'll be some post where like for example, like after today's stream, I'll post her up and say basically the painting on her is all finished. I just have to finish the base. What do you guys think? I'm super proud of her. And then the first response will inevitably be, hey, where did you get that holder? And it has like nothing to do with the model itself, um, which is funny. I'm happy to, to direct people over to Stefan Rath's work. I'm happy to help him sell more holders, but it's just kind of funny. That's, that's by far the most common question I get. Glad you could make it on live for a little bit here. Hope your day is going well and hope the family's all well. So now that I've got that, got some of the texture built up, I just want to knock down some of the extreme differences in colors down there. I'm going to take that petroleum gray. I'm just going to do some glazing here. Working down towards the shadows. Might be a little bit more liberal with this than I sometimes am. Put it on a little thicker. I'm not quite as worried about the base. It's gonna have a, some weathering done to it later. And I don't usually generally worry about things on the base quite as much in terms of how clean everything is. Uh, what I'm gonna do for the the cracked glass. It's probably kind of hard to see. It's so dark down there on the base. Um, I think glass usually looks really, really good in a dark blue. Yeah, exactly. Pushing the pigment into where I want the darkest. Um, That's especially important as you start to shadow 
that first pass I was really mostly just tinting everything that's below it so I was mostly just worried about getting a nice coat over everything as I make a couple more passes on it I might start focusing more on the shadow areas so I'm gonna start with a dark blue hey what's up dodec it's good to see you man or that was man or woman I'm not sure it wasn't. It's nice to see you. So I mixed up this blue really, really thin. I'm just going to paint the all the glass area on the gas mask. It was base coated black, so I'm going to leave a little ring of black right around the edge. But if the paint is thin enough, As it dries, it'll just be a hint of blue. It won't be super duper dark blue or rich blue. It'll look more like black tinted blue. And I'm going to do a couple more passes with that, focusing on more and more towards the center of the glass where it's the highest. So again, if, if you did it right, it should only just be a little blue. It shouldn't be jumping out at you blue. So what we're doing is we are finishing alley today. Um, other everything the ba except the base. I probably will not have the base done when I sign off today. But we're going to get paint on everything that needs paint. So everything from her boots up is actually done. We finished it today. So this model is by Black Veil Models. If anybody's interested, it's Alley, the last survivor. She's kind of a We've decided she's a cross between Tomb Raider and Resident Evil. I think she's probably modeled on Mila Jovovich from Resident Evil, but other people have said she's got a lot of Tomb Raider in her, so it's possible it's a cross between the two. But right now we're working on the tire and the gas mask that is on her base. And so right now... I did some layering on the, the gas mask and the tire to build up some texture, some highlights. And right now I'm just doing a loose glazing layer or two to bring back the, the brownish gray tones that I want to dominate. So two passes is probably good enough for to bring those tones back in. Thank you. Um, I might do one or two more down into the shadow areas to make it continue to make those shadow areas darker. While I also go back and work on the glass here. And the final thing that I'll do is I'll, I'll come back and touch up all the metal areas on the gas mask. I'll edge those, make those a little more apparent. One of the glass 
one of the sides of the glass eye covers is all cracked. So that will be interesting to get in there and edit, highlight those cracks without going too crazy. So yeah, on this pass, I'm going to focus more on the areas I want to be darker. Always pulling my paintbrush in the direction that I want the shadows to be because the paintbrush is pulling the pigment. So, so the way the, the holder works is that they're primarily designed to pinch things, which is really good if you have models that have the tabs on their feet. Um, what I usually do is I use paper clip and I just drill some holes either into the base or with models like this. Now let me show you this one's better. So this guy, I drilled it up into his foot. And so I just use the paper clip. With these guys, then it becomes a pin to then attach them to the base. So I just clip it, leaving about a quarter inch or so, just a little bit left on it. With hers, I'll clip the whole thing off or just take a pair of pliers and pop it out because she's going to sit on, ultimately, she's going to be on this plinth. So... Yep, so then I can just stick that between in the little holder. Then when you stick it in the other holder, it puts, puts pressure on the sides of the cork, which then holds her in place. I know a lot of people use things like blue tack. Um, I've just always, I found that the paper clip really works well. For, again, for most models, I ended up wanting to have a pin to attach them to a base anyway. So it's nice to have it just sort of already built in to what I'm doing. Uh, but even with a larger model like this, I just like to have that feeling that she's very secure. And then when I tip her all sorts of different directions, I don't have to really worry about whether she's going to pop free. However, I will show you something. When I was doing my tutorial videos the other day and I was showing things like how to paint um, textured wood, I was just sticking models to the cork um, bases with blue tack. So I do it sometimes, but you know, if I'm gonna be working on the model for a long time, I just figure it might as well be as secure of a connection as I can make it. Well, welcome to the hobby. It's I've been painting or hobbying for about 20 years now, and it still excites me. I still sit at work and look forward to the, the time I can get home and, and sit down at my painting table and get some paint on models. It's a very rewarding hobby. It's very relaxing for me. It's kind of my Zen moment in the day. So hopefully you, 
you find as much joy of it as I do and some of the other people that are here. Um, I don't know how you found me. If you follow me on Twitter at Gorilla Brush, um, you know, I'm always happy to, to give some tips to, to you if you are looking for any advice on anything. You can go back and watch a lot of my uh, my Twitch videos. You can go try to find my YouTube channel where I have all the old streams cataloged from like I've painted this model I've painted from start to finish. Every minute has been um, on film. So you can watch from start to finish how I painted her. And again, I'm, I've got some tutorial videos that'll be coming out in the, in the next several months that might help you out. So Well, I'm glad you found me, Dodek. Um, like I said, if you look, if you find me on Twitter, it's at Gorilla Brush. Oh, it's on my screen actually. Um, or my my website has a couple tutorials up in the blog section, a couple written tutorials. Um, but like I said, I'll have some tutorial videos up. And certainly, if you want to contact me, if you have any questions about what to buy to get started, um, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. There's also I just filmed a video with Ghost Section or a kind of a video, mostly audio on my end, but um, with Ghost Section, who's in the chat right now, that we talked a little bit about getting started in painting. And so that video is on his YouTube channel. I'll be tweeting out the link to that later. But yeah, YouTube is a great place, even if you don't, even beyond my channel or Ghost Section's channel, there's lots of, of good tutorials of how to get started. Another place to check out is Beasts of War. That's a website that has a hobby forum. The people there are, are, are quite friendly and um, are really good about helping new players, new painters, if they're interested in just, hey, what do I do to get started? They're really helpful. Um, Facebook groups, there's a lot of Facebook painting groups out there. There's the, um, the Hobby Hangout is a good place with a lot of good people who are, are good. There's Miniature Painting Tips and Secrets, which is another group on, on Facebook, which is really good. And you can just find tons and tons. There's thousands of painters on those groups, and they're very, very welcoming and, and can help you get started and answer any questions you have. So, yeah, welcome. Okay, let's, let's hit some of those metal areas getting near the end of the stream here. Just a few things to, to wrap up. And like I said, I, the next, we should basically have one more video where we're gonna be doing some terrain. This might be a case where I may paint her base off camera. This might be one of the few things I do and get her attached to the plinth for then the final video um, where I try weathering powder, powders for the first time and we'll see how that goes. But. I don't know. I may wait. I may paint the base with all of you guys on, on camera. So, can't go wrong with Vallejo. They're a good, they're a good brand of paints. But yeah, I agree with you. Uh, ghost section. Some of the the lighter weight models, like the one I was showing you here. This is just a board game model from the Banner Saga Warbands board game. He's super light. Wasn't too worried about him coming off, but some of the other models, whether they have just fewer contact points, like the guy I showed earlier, the, the guy with all the beer beer kegs, he's just got one foot. Um, that's nice to be able to have something pretty solid. So right now I'm just edging the areas that I want to be sort of a gunmetal 
gray slash black. And when I get a little lighter, I'll use probably the same color just to, well, maybe something like this to touch the glass up, like this in the car. Yeah, Citadel are tricky. They're, they kind of have um, specific uses for each of the types of paints, so then they'll have different thicknesses and you know, you kind of have to follow their recipe to, as a new painter to get the most out of those paints. Plus, the pots that they come in are not very fun to work with. Um, what I've done is I basically take all of those pots and I transfer them into dropper bottles because I like the dropper bottles. And that's what Vallejo uses. So. I currently use mostly scale 75 paints, however, I don't necessarily recommend those for new painters. They're really, really good, but they just work a little different. Whenever I see a gas mask that's kind of this style gas mask, I, I always think of Pink Floyd's The Wall and the animated scene with all the like the skeletons and the soldiers and there's that weird kind of creature running around looks like he has a gas mask for a face. Depending on your taste of music and how old you are, that may or may not be a reference that you that you know off the top of your head. What? All right. Sorry, guys. It's just my cat being crazy.
All right, guys, I, other than the, the actual mud and brick and stuff on her base, I'm calling her done. So let's maybe adjust the zoom a little bit. I realized I said I was going to glaze some purple into the gloves to help tie them in with the other leather. I think maybe I won't do that. They look good to, to me the way they are. So there you go. Oh, thanks for joining me, guys, for another Sunday stream. Um, I will get her attached to the plinth for the next time that I paint her, and then we'll start working on the rest of the base. What I'll probably do is glue her down. I'll glue her down this. She has this like extra bit of resin here. I'm trying to debate whether I risk whether it's worth the risk to potentially damage the model but take a Dremel and just take that off so she'll sit more flush with this or just attach her and then kind of fill in the gap. I'm not quite sure which I'm going to do yet but I'm going to attach her to this plinth and then we'll start working on her her base. So again thanks for joining me. Um, again you can watch all of the sections of me painting Allie either on demand on my Twitch channel. I don't think Twitch keeps them forever so if uh, you don't you can go check out my YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel I store all of these videos. They usually go up about 24 to 48 hours after they stream on Twitch. Uh, they're up on my YouTube channel. Again keep a lookout for my tutorial videos that are going to be coming up in the next few months and I'll be posting about I'll be talking about those on stream I'm sure. I'll be uh, tweeting about them on Twitter, putting them on my Facebook page. So follow me on different social media um, and have a great week. Again, thanks for stopping by. Take care.